Hello. Welcome to Levels Plus Weekly, episode 15. And uh, there's a lot <laughs> going on in today's episode. Um, this is a four-parter. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. I've got a book announcement. I've got uh, some of my favorite women streamers and YouTubers. Yeah, I guess content creators, I could say, that I want to share. I've got a whole bunch of Famicom carts and discs, as well as some Amiibo. I'm going to pick up the Amiibo that I've got at Best Buy later this week when I'm picking up some more books because uh, I got a whole bunch of books. <laughs> I've got a couple more coming in the mail. So I like to try to time my trips all together. So um, we'll do the Amiibo next week. So let's get started with the book announcement, which I'm very excited about. Um, so my third book, First and Frequent Fantasy, University Women in Gaming is now available on Amazon. In episode three, I did talk about preliminary stuff about the book. I showed off how it looks and stuff like that um, in a draft form, but it's published now. It's officially a real thing. And it's got an amazing cover by my dear friend J.D. Dixon, who just nailed it, the exact style and motif that I wanted it to look like. Just incredibly thankful for his art and his time transcribing the last few interviews. Um, this book would not exist without J.D. So a huge, huge thank you, and uh, I just, my heart is so full. Um, but uh, the book itself is uh, black and white on the inside because I, if I had it in color, I would have to charge $60 to actually make like $2 profit on it. <laughs> Um, and I just didn't see the need to do that. Um, the, I looked at the black and white on the interior, and while it's it, the the images would have probably benefited from the the color, um, the like the survey data is easy enough to read. Um, I think it'll be fine. Um, the ebook is in color though, and. Um, that is a little bit less. Um, but I would greatly appreciate any support. Um, if you can't afford the book, um, I would love to have the uh, have it just spread around. The goal for this book is to be a research data set. And um, I'm, I'm going to be just figuring out how to get it out there a little bit more than just my usual circles over the weekend. Um, I'm just so excited. Um, it's It's been nine years in the making and just to have it done is something else, I gotta say. Welcome back after our little book announcement excitement. Let's get out of the void and into the main topic of today's video. Hopefully my uh, laptop isn't being too loud today. Um, someday I'm going to get better equipment, I promise. It is not this day, I'm buying Famicom games. <laughs> in Astro City Minis. Um, 
Uh, so to finish off our Women's History Month content for uh, Levels Plus Weekly, I'd like to share eight um, content creators slash streamers that I particularly enjoy. Um, they're not all video game content, but I'll kind of go into each of them individually as we go. First video it, that you've had sitting in front of you for a little bit is um, an example of Kita Nash Gaming. And what I'm going to do as I mention these individuals is I will put up a link to their YouTube page and their Twitch page if applicable. And um, I don't mean to infringe on their content in any way. So I'm not going to play anything too super long. Um, it's really just to kind of give a sample of their content and to talk about why I really like what they do. Um, so Kita is a really good streamer. She's my favorite streamer. I subscribe to her on Twitch. I'm subscribed to her YouTube channels. I'm a part of her community. Um, she's an awesome, awesome person. Really have enjoyed getting to be a part of that experience over the last couple months. Um, the example I've got here is from a playthrough of Saints Row the Third that she did with Cat for the Win, who is at the very tail end of my selections because I also adore Cat's work. Um, but I didn't want to put them side by side, so there was a little bit of a break. Kita does a lot of solo streaming, Cat does a lot of solo streaming, or streams with um, other people. Um, but um, I, I wanted to select something from Saints Row the third because the Saints Row playthroughs are excellent. And uh, this is a particularly funny bit here. So let's go ahead and give it a quick play. And what? My what? homie. <laughs> That's my homie. Where did she come from? She wasn't here. Oh my the whole god, that's time. amazing. She what? wasn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> this lady Five. just jumps in the back of the car and we're both like, excuse me. Please. I thought it was Kita at first glitching no. out. I didn't realize it was a separate person. Why won't they stop shooting at us? Why are they blockading? Just run them over. Get in no. the car, me. Oh, oh, she glitched into the... My, oh, oh, no! 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 Oh, no!
we'll go ahead and listen to a little bit of her review of this game. You know what NES games need more of? Dogs. And not the jerks who laugh at you when you fail. The helpful, loyal kind. The ones who are always by your side. Man's best friend. Today, I'm talking about a game with a great dog. It's Conquest of the Crystal Palace. Conquest of the Crystal Palace was developed by Quest and released for NES in 1990. You play a boy named Farron, who finds out that he is the Prince of the Kingdom of the Crystal Palace, which had been taken over by the evil Zerus when he was just a baby. You're told this by your faithful dog, Zap, who is actually a keeper of the palace and starts you on a quest to take your kingdom back. When you first start up the game, you're given the choice between three crystals to improve one of your attributes, either your life meter, attack ability, or jump height. I took the jump height, but the choice here doesn't matter for long, as you'll get the chance to obtain the other power-ups as you play. So as she does her reviews, which are usually about 8 to 10 minutes in length, she just breaks down elements of the game that stood out to her. Like in this case, she really likes the fact that you have a dog ally throughout the game that uh, also helps you start your quest. Um, but she had, she's just really, really good at doing these reviews. Um, I've enjoyed watching her videos for a few years now, and um, if you want someone who gives uncompromising opinions on her experiences playing retro games, this is a great channel to come to. She also does like monthly updates on pickups and what she's playing. She recently started doing a bunch of Xbox Live um, or Game Pass games that you should check out. Um, I've talked about some of her favorite Metroidvanias. So she just does a lot of good content. So cannot be tamed. Awesome channel. Highly recommend. All right. I dropped a pause on Jenny Nicholson here in the middle of uh, what what she's doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it and then I'll talk about Jenny afterwards. It is unusual to find a cluster of spiders, especially during the day. I wasn't scared when I opened the shower curtain. This spider is too big to be scary. The eyes are like very tiny Christmas ornaments. Gloria has scared me in the past. I thought I had the house to myself one night when she was at an open mic. My workshop was in the basement, and I planned to do some sketches for the solar panel racks I was building. When I opened the door to the basement, I turned on the light, and Gloria was standing at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> She'd been standing in the dark and practicing the poem she was going to read. The poem was called Babies. <laughs> Three stars for the spider. The product description has this, like, promo image, like extolling its virtues, creeping and crawling, red eyes and fangs, hairy body and legs, hang in the air or in a giant web, glowing eyes and a squeaking voice. That's the feedback I get about myself also. It has safety warnings and directions in this section and a legal disclaimer, and all three are about anal fissures. It can itch and cause pain. Why is this here? If you don't know about Jenny, um, she is a really funny YouTube um, content creator who does a lot of nerdy videos. This is a bit of an outlier for her, but she's done a couple spider um, plush videos lately. Um, I'll go ahead and go to her channel uh, real quick, just so you can kind of see. Um, she's a big Star Wars nerd, but she also has done stuff on Vampire Diaries, which is a great video. It's a two hour and a half long video, but it's a really good video. I enjoyed it greatly, and I have no interest in the show. Uh, she did an hour long breakdown of all the Land Before Time movies. Um, and personally, my favorite content is her Star Wars stuff. So she does a lot of like. She really, really does like a breakdown of why Rise of Skywalker wasn't great, and I agree with her 100%. Um, I love her delivery. I love her sense of humor. Um, it's very deadpan, <laughs> but I enjoy that about her greatly. And she does a lot of research for her stuff. It's clear that she's passionate. I There's just no question to me that Jenny is one of the best content creators on YouTube right now. 
doing funny, funny stuff. And you can watch her make a fur-bearing trout now, which is funny in its own way. <laughs> so next up is uh, Pelvic Gaming. This is Miss Pelvic. She does reviews much like Pam at Cannot Be Tamed. Um, but this is another person who I really enjoy watching um, because uh, she's very honest about her experiences playing um, RPGs. That's primarily what her channel focuses on is um, RPGs and action adventure games. Um, so this is a little excerpt from her Trials of Mana Remake review. The Trials of Mana Remake is a fun and fantastical journey that will certainly have you returning for more playthroughs. But, just like any game, the gameplay is the most important. The Trials of Mana Remake is unique because it feels and plays like a polished PlayStation 2 game. And I mean that as a compliment. Not only are the looks reminiscent of PlayStation 2 graphics, but certain choices like the menu pausing to access spells or items, or having limited fight space. Trials of Mana is an action RPG. You're able to dodge, perform quick light attacks, slow heavy attacks, charge attacks, and a clash strike, aka your super move. Making combos from light and heavy attacks felt great, and using a charge strike to remove enemy armor felt powerful. Enemies drop crystals, which are used to charge up your clash strike gauge. They also telegraph their moves like an MMO. You can see where they're going to strike and how long until the attack goes off. After battle, you get battle bonuses. Not taking any damage or defeating enemies under a certain time will earn extra experience. Kevin is my favorite, a hard hitter turns into a werewolf at night, giving him more power. Second is Hawkeye, super speedy, and Angela, you just sit back and cast. Trials of Mana also kept the ring system, one ring for items and the other for spells. A lovely enhancement is the quick menu, where you can set spells or items for instant use. Otherwise, mentioned before, opening the ring system pauses the game and allows you to breathe as you plan out your strategy. Now. So that was a lot of information that she just tossed out there in a compelling way. And honestly, I 100% agree with her opinion that this is a really polished PS2 Dreamcast era game. I said as much in my review. Um, but Miss Pelvic just does awesome, awesome reviews. And she's got like just a really good cadence and is just able to explain a lot of stuff really quickly and succinctly, but not in a rushed manner. It's, it's a really good talent to be able to do that, and she, she just nails it all the time. So I highly recommend checking out her channel as well if you are interested in RPGs. Uh, she also does quite a few things on music as well. Um, so we're going to take a little break from video game stuff, although you do see the Nintendo sign lit up behind uh, Beth here. This is Beth B. Rad. I just recently got into her art um, YouTube channel. Um, I have known her from when she was doing Let's Plays with her now husband and a friend of theirs um, as a group Fresh Plays. Um, they have not been able to record anything for a long while, which is a bit of a bummer because I enjoyed the dynamic that they had. But Beth is an artist by trade, and she's a really, really good artist. Um, and I've been really enjoying watching her um, process um, lately when she posts. Um, this particular one was her working with chalk pastels, which is not her favorite medium, and she's very, very upfront about it. But what I enjoy about Beth is that she looks for the positive and is aware of the experience of doing something live like this. I mean, it is edited, but she is basically recording stuff live as she's doing it. And, um... It's just very honest about about her process, what she goes through, the thoughts that she has, and I really like that about her. So let's go ahead and watch a little bit of her working on this piece. We're gonna do my go-to. My go-to when it comes to just like sketching for funsies. A lady and some leaves. I always like to draw ladies and leaves when it comes to testing out materials. Vibin', chillin', acting all cool, relaxin', beboxin'. How do I go about this? I don't have a pencil. And the other YouTubers, when they get a palette full pack, they only use the things that are in the pack. Do I only use the things in the pack, or do I allow myself the freedom of 
being an adult. So I've used a cool erase pencil and a needable eraser to lay in just a lady who I'm going to put a mess on. Fix? We're not going to fix. We're just going to do what the tip said. It said layer on the paper. Remember, when we're working like this, we have to work differently than we're used to. That's all. This is just very, very different. Not bad. Nothing's bad. Nothing's really actually bad when it comes to mark making on a piece of paper. It's just different. So that's where it ended up. And um, that's just really incredible. Um, so like I said, she's a really good artist and I've really been enjoying watching her process. All right, so Lindsay Ellis is one of my favorite people on YouTube. No question about it. Um, she does some of the best overall film theater criticism and occasionally dabbles with other other mediums, but primarily does film and theater criticism. Um, and every single time she does something, it's amazing and informative and funny. And I pretty much put down whatever I'm watching if I see her <laughs> put something new. Um, I attended a book signing of hers online last year and that was awesome and I have a signed copy of her first book um, which I need to still read. I need to read but that's a completely separate topic. <laughs> um, this particular video that I pulled as an example of her work is about Cats the movie based on the stage show um, and I, it's an hour long, so I dove pretty deep in to try to get into more of something that would be just kind of a good bite-sized piece. I don't know if I'm going to find that great example of a bite-sized piece of Lindsay Ellis content because she's just like, the whole thing is such a delight and it all builds and wraps around itself just to build this really incredible conclusion. But I think this will work for a brief example of how she do. So let's go ahead and play that. Although I will attempt to find rationale, if not reason, in the film version of Cats, there are many bewildering choices that I can only attribute to Hoop Harry and Lindsay. From horny Judy Dench scissoring in delight after Gus the theater cat, to Jennifer Hudson spending most of her screen time in close-ups with her face covered in snot, to McCavity being played the way that he is. Scary. How do you manage to make Idris Elba unappealing? And you know what? I'm gonna dab. The aspect of the film that drew the most attention, positive and negative, after that first trailer was released was the uncanny valleyness of it all which all goes back to Hooper's attempts to draw this weird, fantastical show back down to realism. Said Hooper in an interview for The Atlantic, I wanted to keep it very grounded in the present moment. The thing I'm most proud of is that you feel grounded watching it. It's not that fantastical. Which... It's... It's cats, dude. Um... But Lindsay is awesome. I really enjoy her work. Highly recommend her channel. All right, as promised in last week's episode, part two of this Level Plus Weekly is going to be this super cool box of Famicom stuff. Let's go ahead and get the box open. So as I mentioned, this is a whole bunch of Famicom carts and discs for Famicom, my upcoming book. Um, this is just the beginning of all that. And uh, I can see the assortment of plastics in here already. So this is exciting. This is so exciting. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna do this kind of quickly. Um, I am on a time crunch. 
Um, I'm taking a quick break from work to shoot this. So I will not take forever, but um, I'm already excited. It's like I haven't even got into this box and I'm already excited. So, you know, I never realized how small the uh, Famicom Disk System discs were. Um, I knew that the carts were small because I have one, but I did not realize how small the discs were. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I've got 29 games bundled up in these, uh, cute little, cute little bundles here. And you can see that, uh, Famicom carts tended to be just so much more colorful. Alright, so, I'll leave this here, because I've got little rubber bands. So, first up is Fire Emblem. Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Um, this will not be in the first book. It will not be in the second book. I just grabbed it because it was available and there's a lot of women in the game. So uh, I needed to have it eventually. And I was trying to save on shipping. So uh, that's why that's there. Number two is Super Mario USA. Um, this is essentially uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 in the United States. Um, originally when that game came out in Japan, it had completely different characters and was for a promotional event with Fuji TV. Uh, next up is Dragon Quest, the original one. Um, this one I actually just recently added to being in the book and needing a physical, um, because <clears throat> I felt that, uh, Princess Gwalyn deserved a little bit more props than just being a side article. All right, and next up, this is the game that was the originator of the Famicom in the first place, Donkey Kong. Unfortunately, the focus is not really wanting to help with. Um, yeah, that it's just hard to believe that 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 card is as old as I am. <laughs> um, I'm a little older by a few months, but um, that's here because of Pauline. And then Super Mario Brothers three. Um, Mario 3 is one of those, as well as Mario USA, that were a little ahead um, in terms of inclusion, but I felt that Peach was a notable enough character to just kind of go ahead and write everything about her on the NES in advance, so I went ahead and did that. And then we've got Clue Clue Land. Uh, this is the first playable female character on the Famicom with bubbles. All right. Next up is uh, YY World from Konami. Um, I bought this for a future book. Um, I don't remember exactly when this comes out, but Konami Lady is in it. And that's why I'm getting it early. Uh, next up is Valkyrie. I forget exactly the Japanese name for this. Um, no, Baiken, I want to say, or Baken. Um, this is the first human woman playable character on the Famicom. Just beat Metroid by like a week. And here is Super Mario Brothers. And that, I think, rounds out all the Mario stuff. And of course, that's there for Peach. Uh, this is The Goonies 2. Um, normally, I wouldn't be doing licensed games on this feature, um, but Annie's an original character. She was not in the movie, so. I made, a, I made an exception. 
All right, this is kind of a weird one, and I don't remember exactly how what its name is. Um, so I'll put a little text box under here that tells the name. Um, uh, this will be in book two, and it's a space and space harrier clone, uh, but you play as a, a schoolgirl in it. And then the last cart in this bunch is Final Fantasy, uh, which I am uh, going to have in book two. All right, that's one bundle. That was the biggest one. So these other ones will be a little bit snappier. I still can't believe I have all these cards. <laughs> um, back to it. Uh, this is Heru no Ken. Um, we knew this as Flying Dragon, the Secret Scroll here. Um, Min Min made her debut in that game. Um, this is Anka Kyo Town. I'll put the proper title underneath. Uh, this was the first playable anthropomorphized character on the Famicom, as well as the first one from a third party. Um, next up is Ice Climber. Um, Nana's on the cover, so I think that this is the first appearance of a woman on the Famicom, and while she's only second player um, in terms of playability, she's the first playable human in any format on the Famicom. She's just not the lead. Um, this is for book two. This is Miracle Rompet. I forget the rest of the title. Um, but that is a, a young girl piloting this giant mech. So that's pretty neat. Um, this one's an interesting one. This is an Adventure Island spinoff based on an anime that came out in Japan. Um, all I remember is Baguette No Honey. I don't remember anything else about it. Um, but it does feature um, Honey, if I remember is her name. And um, she's the first playable character. You have to rescue uh, Master Higgins with her before you can play as her. And this is a beat up cart, but it is the Wing of Medulla. Um, that's Lucia on the cover there. This was Sunsoft's first leading woman. Um, this one's seen some, seen some playtime, <laughs> that's for sure, and some sun, but uh, that game seems to be kind of hard to grab, so I, I kind of just had to go for it, even though the condition was not optimal. Um, here's the original Adventure Island. Um, and that's here for, uh, I forget her name in this original game. It, the, the damseling situation in that game is bananas. Um, Leilani, I think, is the name of the character. And then it becomes Tina, but I think it was Tina in the Japanese version. Um, the article will explain a lot. Um, so this next one is Mock Rider. Uh, the reason I have Mock Rider... Um, is because of the Versus Mock Rider article, um, which posits that Mock Rider could be a woman. Um, so that's why I have it. Um, next up is King's Knight, uh, one of Square's lesser known games. It's an overhead shooter. Um, I have this because of the middle box there. That's Princess Claire. Um, and she was notable enough to be on the box, so I made a decision to add her to uh, my purchases. And that was kind of the same deal with Challenger by Hudson. Um, this was never localized, but um, Marie is on the box, and she is a Princess Leia ripoff. <laughs> and then last but not least is uh, Fire Emblem Gaiden. Um, you can see Celica there on the cover, 
Uh, she's one of the reasons why I have this card. Um, I also love Fire Emblem Echoes, uh, the remake. So it was just kind of neat to uh, have that join in. Um, and the nice thing about the Fire Emblem cards is that they weren't not very expensive. All right, so now we're going to get into the discs. Okay, so disc number one is The Legend of Zelda, or as it's known here, the Hyrule Fantasy. Um, I'm going to be very careful, but that's what the discs look like. I'm not going to open all of these. Um, most of these I got complete. Or at least with the with the case, because I didn't really want to have these just sitting around loose. Um, next up is uh, Kid Icarus. I forget what the Japanese name is. Um, and then these are the complete ones. Uh, those two were loose, but these are the complete ones. So naturally they... Uh, they cost a little bit more. All right, so number one is Metroid. How cool is that to have the original Metroid? Um, what I think I'll probably do is open these up at a later time, but um, I'm just like in awe of having the original Metroid. All right, the second one that I got to complete is Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. <laughs> this is the one I'm least excited about because I don't like this game. But um, I needed to have it for Zelda. These last two though, these last two I am very excited about. And original Castlevania. And Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. Um, yeah, both of those were originally disc system games um, that uh, Konami had to convert over to the um, cartridge format when they came out on the NES. Um, and that's why I'm wearing my one of my Castlevania shirts is because I can't believe in this year, I've filled three major gaps in my Castlevania collection by getting the PSP game as well as the two disc system games. Um, Castlevania 3 is on a cart. Um, it's actually, I think, cheaper to buy the American cart than the Japanese cart, oddly enough, probably because of the music and the sound qualities of that. So I haven't got that yet, although I will have to because of Sypha. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just awesome. Um, super stoked to have all of these. Um, all of them are going to be used in the books, but I don't have any intention on getting rid of them because I think it's also kind of cool to have all of the games that women have been in on the Famicom on top of, um, on top of, uh, doing it for the book. If you want to help me acquire more of these for um, future book projects here's my patreon link um, all the money that goes into my patreon um, goes into my books um, so far I've been able to pay for first and frequent fantasy but um, the patreon at this point is going into additional purchases of Famicom stuff um, so I can continue to get these books up to the level visually that I want them to. Um, I'm just sitting here staring at this pile of stuff <laughs> going, what in the world? How cool is this? So I'm just stoked. I'm sorry. I'm just like so dumbfounded. I'm just looking at these carts and discs and going, how do I have these? I just It's like a weird dream. I never thought. And yet, there it is, just sitting in front of me. I hope you enjoyed the Famicom um, pickup. That was a lot of fun. I'm excited about doing another order. 
Hope you enjoyed the news on the book, which uh, once I actually get my copy um, in the mail, I'll probably devote some more time to. And uh, learning about some of the really awesome streamers and content creators out there um, that are women doing awesome stuff. Um, so that'll be the end of this episode. Until next week, friends, take care.